Did you know that your reality and everything that's happening to you in your life won't change until you change? Did you notice that your everyday experiences are very similar? The feelings and the emotions that you experience every day are the same. That's because you continue attracting what you emit. If you want to change your reality, you have to change your personality, your identity. You have to start think and feel differently. No matter what else you do, you can try hard, you can pray to God, whatever. Nothing will change your reality but you. Nobody can help you but you. And when you take responsibility for everything that ever happened to you, that will be very liberating for one simple reason. You will understand that you are always in control and you will understand that you are the creator of your life, of everything in your life. That's it. You will be motivated to stop creating limited experiences and you will become empowered to create whatever you want. Everything is possible for you. You just need to become aware of that and you need to accept it. I am an unlimited being. Repeat that to yourself always and you will feel goosebumps all over your body. That's because deep down, you know that it's true. So if you want to change yourself and consequently your life, then this video is for you. Stick for a while and learn how to change your personality. Because when you do, your experiences automatically, naturally change. That's the law. The universe reshapes itself and sends you experiences that match your vibration, your frequency. As we develop our model of understanding, merging quantum physics with neuroscience, neuroendocrinology, psychoneuroimmunology, and epigenetics, we can construct a blueprint for understanding. The next step is being able to explain this model. If you can't explain it, it's not firmly wired in your brain. However, if you can explain it, you're installing the neurological hardware, preparing for the experience. A complete scientific model leaves no room for conjecture, superstition, or dogma. When you comprehend the what and the why, the how becomes easier because you can assign meaning to your actions. Creating an environment where people feel safe to practice is essential. Aligning their behaviors with intentions, matching actions to thoughts, allows them to unlearn habits of thought, behavior, and emotions. Over time, when thoughts and feelings are in harmony, when the mind and body align, a new experience unfolds. This experience triggers the formation of neuron networks and patterns, leading to the release of chemicals, also known as feelings or emotions. Embodying these emotions from an experience chemically instructs the body, bridging the gap between intellectual understanding and physical embodiment. The payoff of an experience is an emotion nourishing the body. Over time, the body undergoes changes due to the environmental signals impacting genes. Genes make proteins, and when a person remains stuck in the same emotional state, genes begin to deteriorate, leading to a genetic destiny. However, New experiences with their unique emotions can select and instruct new genes, altering a person's future. If you've done it once, you should be able to do it again. Repeating an experience neurochemically conditions the mind and body, making it second nature. This mastery moves us from knowledge to experience, from thinking to doing, from philosopher to initiate to master. We all possess the biological and neurological machinery for this transformation. In this age, it's not enough just to know. It's essential to know how. So, we retreat from our lives, distancing ourselves from the constant information bombardment from our surroundings, the people we know, and the places we go. These repetitive experiences often lead to the same emotional responses, making us victims of our circumstances. It's time to take control, understand how the environment influences us, and choose our responses consciously. The stronger the emotions we feel toward a person or a problem in our life, the more our attention is drawn to it. 
Where our attention goes, our energy follows, and we inadvertently give away our power to that person or situation. Interestingly, we're uncovering that the way we think and feel can impact our surroundings. If we keep responding the same way to the same life situations and these situations consistently make us feel and think the same way, it's as if we're thinking and feeling in alignment with everything we've experienced. In other words, we keep reinforcing or recreating the same environment. Every person, object, experience and place is already stored in our brain's neural pathways because we've encountered them all. Moreover, we attach emotions to each person or thing. When we react to someone based on our past memories and can't think beyond how we feel, we're essentially dwelling in the past. If we believe our thoughts influence our destiny, thinking this way will lead to more of the same in our lives. Many people start their day by dwelling on their problems, which are essentially memories etched in their brains, linked to specific people, objects, and past events. When they recall these problems, they're living in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and emotions are the language of the body. How we think and feel shapes our state of being. Consequently, most people begin their day with their entire state of being mired in the past. If they remember the feeling of unhappiness, it triggers certain thoughts, which in turn release chemicals that intensify their unhappiness. The brain then confirms their misery, leading to more corresponding thoughts. This cycle hardwires their brain into a set of automatic programs. Remarkably, the body can't differentiate between emotions resulting from real-life experiences and those fabricated purely through thought. It believes it's stuck in the same past experience 24 sevenths, locking the person into a familiar state of being. To initiate change, a person must rewire the brain and the body to break free from this familiar past. However, they often wake up and go through the same routine behaviors, existing in the same environment and doing the same things. This habitual pattern puts their body on autopilot, repeating redundant unconscious thoughts, behaviors and emotions acquired through repetition. Habits develop when you've done something so frequently that your body becomes better at it than your conscious mind. This leads to the body dragging a person toward the same future based on their past actions. You can almost take their yesterday and place it directly on their tomorrow, robbing them of their free will. By the time we reach 35, we've etched a set of behaviors, emotional reactions, habits, hardwired beliefs, perceptions, and attitudes into our psyche. These function much like programs that run automatically once triggered. Therefore, change isn't as simple as thinking positively as many people carry programs that predispose them to negative feelings. When the thought remains unchanged, the body follows suit. If the known past and the predictable future are our existing reality, the only place where the unknown exists is the present moment, which holds the potential for transformation. Now, as you become more familiar with your behaviors and more aware of them, you're less like a program and more like the consciousness observing the program. It's only when we forget and become unconscious that we slip back into those programs. How many of you have encountered emotions like agitation, frustration, or impatience? Okay, tell me, what do you do when you have those your emotions? Do your actions follow your emotions? How would your actions look like if you felt emotions like love and gratitude? These feelings can anchor a person to the past. The crucial question is whether these emotions belong in your future. If you aim to live abundantly, you can't dwell in lack. To master your health or a health condition, you can't remain in pain or separation. Emotional disentanglement from the past and breaking free from hardwired thought patterns and behaviors takes substantial effort. 
If your personality shapes your personal reality and it does, then denaturing your personality and stepping into the unknown may enable you to think in new ways. By focusing your intention and attention, you start installing new mental circuits. Repetition helps these mental pathways become more like software, making it easier to adopt new thoughts such as I am unlimited or synchronicities do happen in my life. Imagine starting your day by envisioning how you want to behave in various situations. By rehearsing how you'll interact with others at work or during your commute, you can create a state of presence. Your brain can't distinguish between your mental rehearsal and reality when you're truly present in the process. So, your imagination helps create neural circuits that make it seem like you've already experienced it. This process propels your brain into the future, and with repetition, the new mental programming becomes more automatic. You'll find yourself acting like a happy person. There's no magic here. It's the power of neural rewiring. Now, the most challenging aspect of this whole journey is altering the way you feel. Many people seeking to manifest change in their lives are waiting for an external experience to occur before they can feel the associated emotion. They're essentially separate from the feeling and experience they desire, waiting for their environment to change to fill the void. They forget that they're the creators of their reality, and this sense of lack keeps their dreams at arm's length. But the moment you begin to feel gratitude, wholeness or worthiness and abundance, you start generating those emotions. When you walk in a state of empowerment or love for life and yourself, you're creating a vibrational match. If you're in awe of life, you're likely to have a mystical experience. Now, you're causing an effect. We now understand that to change our state of being, all we need is a clear intention for the future combined with an elevated emotion. Just as we remember the past more strongly when emotions are involved, the same applies to future events. The stronger the emotion you connect with a clear intention, the more you alter your internal state, focusing on the mental images that your brain captures, which then become long-term memories. You'll think within the circuits of those experiences and feel within the boundaries of those emotions. The more intense the emotion tied to your intention, the more your body gets a taste of the future. It only takes a thought and a feeling to set this process in motion. Einstein once said that it's the field, not the particle, that holds the ultimate authority. In essence, it's energy that governs matter, not the other way around. Therefore, if we can shift the energy within the field, we can, in fact, transform matter. Am I making sense here? Now, if you wish to affect this change, it requires a crystal clear intention and a heightened emotion. When a person experiences disintegration and incoherence in their brain and heart, they essentially lack the energy to connect to the field. They become static, like a radio with no signal. However, when the heart starts beating in harmony, it's similar to dropping pebbles in an orderly manner into a calm lake, producing waves of energy or frequency. The more coherent the heart, the stronger the signal it emits. When the brain is also in coherence, we can imprint an intentional thought onto this energy. In essence, we are sending out a completely new electromagnetic signature into the field. It's vital to understand that what we broadcast into the field is our experiment with destiny. The thought serves as the directive, while the feeling from the heart functions as the magnetic charge, drawing events back to us. The combination of these two creates a kind of Wi-Fi signal that allows us to connect with the unified field. Are you with me so far? You're learning how to harness this power and I understand that some of you may feel frustrated or think that something is wrong because you can't seem to make it work. Please know that you're in the process of learning and frustration and impatience can steer your brain in the wrong direction. Can we agree on that? So, if you're aware of this, even in the midst of frustration, 
you can choose to change your perspective. Rather than dwelling on thoughts like, why isn't this working for me? What's wrong with me? I must need a brain scan. Understand that the only emotion you need to overcome is this feeling of disturbance. Once you master that, you'll be well on your way to experiencing the incredible potential I'm discussing. Are you still following me? I'm fully aware of what I need to do to reconnect with the emotions of my future and align myself with the energy of that future. Once I'm attuned to the energy of that future, I find myself emotionally connected to it, and my body starts following the path. My mind paves towards that destiny. In fact, you could say that my future starts coming to me. Are you following along? Learning how to create coherence in both the brain and the heart can become a valuable skill. When we examine the brains of individuals who can alter their brain waves and enter a deep sense of safety and rest in the present moment, we observe a slowing down of their brain waves to the theta brainwave patterns. This state is highly receptive to new information, making it the perfect moment to rewrite a new program and rehearse a new way of being subconsciously. As a result, they reprogram themselves towards a new destiny. Theta brainwave state acts as a bridge between the conscious and subconscious minds, inducing a highly suggestible and almost hypnotic state. In this state, we can auto-suggest and reprogram ourselves, accepting, believing, and surrendering to the new information. Elevated emotions like gratitude and appreciation can transform the body to the point where it becomes programmable. When something amazing or favorable happens and you feel gratitude, you are essentially in the perfect emotional state to receive. Can we agree on that? Now let's consider someone who repeats thoughts like, I'm wealthy, I'm healthy, I'm unlimited. But their body remains stuck in unhappiness. The body rejects these thoughts as the thought never reaches beyond the brainstem. However, when a person genuinely connects with the emotion of gratitude or feels the emotions they would experience if their desired reality were already true and sustains that state, they become suggestible to the new information. Their body believes it has already happened, allowing the thought to bypass the brain stem and reach the body. In this way, we start altering our autonomic nervous system. Living in our three-dimensional reality and continuously reacting to problems and conditions can weaken the body and disintegrate the brain. We often place excessive focus on matter and the particle in quantum physics, overlooking the fact that reality comprises both particle and wave. We've grown so accustomed to seeing matter that if our dreams aren't immediately visible, we tend to believe they don't exist. When we create from matter to matter, the time it takes for our thoughts to become our experiences creates a considerable gap. This gap is known as time. Some individuals have dreams and aspirations that seem to take ages to materialize. The elongated wait often distracts them to the point where they forget their dreams because the time it takes seems daunting. Do you agree with that? Einstein emphasized that it's not matter emitting a field, it's the field controlling matter. If we could tap into this field and create from it, rather than from matter, influencing matter with energy, might we be able to shorten the distance between cause and effect? Instead of exerting effort to chase our goals, could we become a vortex that draws the events to us through synchronized energy? Thanks to brain and heart coherence, there's a vibrational match between us and that future. In this scenario, the thought serves as the electrical charge and the feeling acts as the magnetic charge. So here's the deal. When you shift from creating in the realm of matter to creating from the field, you no longer need to chase things down. You become a vortex and that's when the magic of synchronicity starts to unfold. Opportunities and meaningful coincidences naturally come your way. The fundamental question then is, which path would you rather choose? Now, let's take a moment to dissect the concept of space-time. 
In our three-dimensional reality, we reside within space-time. Space appears infinite, and we experience time by moving through it. Everything tangible that we perceive with our senses, everything that is matter, possesses height, width, and depth. We categorize it as local, since it occupies both space and time. Our senses deceive us into feeling separate. This illusion convinces us that there's a me here and a you there, and everything seems detached from our individual selves. In this world of matter, density and form, where we dwell in our physical reality, we are essentially local beings in space and time. The vastness of space, the infinity of time, and our preoccupation with our physical existence seem to keep us bound to this perception of reality. Our attention is usually anchored in our body, our identity, our possessions, our location, and our time frame. This is our personality, striving to mold our reality. In our pursuit of desires and dreams within this realm, we typically navigate space to reach our goals, which requires an expenditure of time and energy. The process of getting there involves an investment in effort and time. Are you with me so far? Within this realm of space-time, we perceive a vast expanse. Space appears to be eternal, providing an expansive canvas for our dreams to manifest. To bring our desires to life, we meticulously plan and predict our way through this vastness. Our attention is fixated on the known, focused on the tangible and predictable elements of our journey. Does this resonate with you? But what if I told you that there exists an invisible realm of energy, an energetic field known as the unified field or quantum field, which you can experience solely through your senses? You experience reality through your senses, and by opening your awareness to this field, you enter a territory where your awareness is drawn away from your physical self. Instead of identifying with your body and your possessions, you find yourself in a state where you are nobody in particular. Your attention shifts away from things you own, places you inhabit, and times that dictate your schedule. You move from being someone to no one. Can you relate? This shift is so profound that you aren't even aware of your physical presence, your bodily sensations, your possessions, or your environment. You transcend thinking about the past and the future. In this unique state, you journey from the known space-time reality to the uncharted territory of the four-dimensional reality, the eternal present moment. We call this place the Eye of the Needle. You can't access the quantum field with your body because it belongs to the realm of the physical. Pure consciousness is the key to this door, and that's what we mean by getting beyond the self. Now imagine that all your attention is off your body, your environment, the known world, and the predictable future. As you slow your brain waves from beta to alpha, something remarkable unfolds. You start to experience a natural process where the autobiographical self the reservoir of all you've learned and experienced loses energy and activity in your thinking neocortex. Follow me so far? You are disinvesting all your attention and energy from the known world, transcending it and becoming pure consciousness. You are stepping into a realm where you're bigger than your body, your environment, and time. In this process, you free yourself from everything known and open up to what else exists but the unknown. This, my friends, is the gateway to transformation. If this video has resonated with you and sparked a fire of transformation within, I encourage you to amplify its impact. Smash that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up to signal your commitment to your own evolution. And why stop there? Spread the wisdom and inspiration by sharing this video with your tribe, your friends, your family. Let's ignite a global wave of awakening together. Thank you for tuning in and being an active participant in this journey of growth and expansion.